Hey folks, welcome to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be continuing the build on a 1929 Mercedes SSK. And I'm gonna be replacing the valve seals on an overhand cam engine and fabricating some fan shroud all the way around the radiator and also showing you how to do heat wrap on uh, headers or an exhaust pipe, whatever you might have. But uh, if you have a car that's burning oil, um, likely there's two reasons why it's burning oil. It's because the rings are bad on the engine, it's just worn out and the rings aren't sealing on the piston walls. Or the other common cause is that your valve seals on top of the valve shaft um, are all worn out or just brittle like mine and uh, need to be replaced and that might uh, just take care of the problem. So if you have a car that's smoking burning oil, you see the blue smoke coming out of the exhaust pipe, or you see somebody going on road, that might be the case. So I'll show you how to replace, uh, with the engine in the car, uh, how to replace the valve seals with a, with a special tool. Uh, and this is for an overhead cam I'm gonna be doing, but the principle is the same for a push rod engine, like a 350 Chevy small block, or a 351 Windsor Ford, or whatever you might have that has push rods and uh, rocker valves. So please like, share, and subscribe. Help support the channel by hitting the subscribe button. Hit the like button if you like. Uh, leave any comments you might have uh, on stuff I'm doing right or doing wrong. And uh, let's go ahead and get to it. The engine, uh, when I first started, I get a puff of blue smoke. And uh, usually the cause of that is bad, bad valve seals. So uh, I think uh, today's project is I'm gonna pull the cover off and then uh, I'll show you how to replace valve seals on an overhead cam. But uh, I wanna get that done and uh, get that serviced. So here's two types of spring compressors. This is the one I'm gonna use on the overhead cam engine, uh, which is real handy to have. And I'll put the link in the description. This is one for like, uh, if you were doing a head uh, that's off the car on like a small block Chevy, or I use this on a Cummins diesel. Um, but what you do is uh, adjust the screw on the bottom of the head. This goes on the top of the spring, this little cup on here. And then you have a lever arm that you spin uh, to make it compress like so. But uh, either of those tools work really well. I'm getting prepared. I got the valve cover off. I got the spark plugs out of the hole to release the compression. I have a socket and a ratchet on the front of the crank so I can rotate it. I want to take uh, the first cylinder here, number four, and I want to rotate the uh, cam lobes around so the valves are totally closed all the way on both the intake and the exhaust, which I've done right here. And then the next thing is um, I have a compression tester. Uh, that goes in the spark plug. I think I used that in my first video. Uh, if you go back and look at my playlist, you'll see the first video. But anyway, um, this has a quick connect on there that's the same size as my air compressor lines. And uh, so what I'm gonna do is take and use this to pressurize the cylinder to hold the valves up. Um, so I'm gonna put 90 pounds of pressure. Um, in the end of the compression tester, if you're gonna do it this way, there is a Schrader valve. Um, just like a bicycle tube and it's right in the end here unscrew that because that's like a check valve you don't want that in when I'm just pressurizing put that back on I'm gonna put this back into the spark plug hole and then connect up and I'll have 90 pounds of pressure holding up another old-school way of doing it is to feed some rope down into the spark plug hole pack it full and then raise it up all the way and the rope will actually hold the valves up but uh, yeah I'm gonna use air since I have the fittings here to do it. So um, the next thing is, is that for an overhead cam, I need to compress the springs. And I got this on Amazon. I'll put the link in the description. If you're ever servicing an overhead cam engine, you need a spring compressor uh, to get to the valve seals. Um, this is what you're gonna use. It's gonna hook underneath, basically saddle that, and then go on to the spring and then push down and it'll compress the spring. So you can get the little, keeper wedges out, which I'll show you here in a bit. 
but uh, works really well to have one of these tools. I think it was like 50 bucks, something like that, but it's a nice tool to have in your box. This is a Ford 2.34 uh, liter engine, and um, the neat thing about this engine is really slick. The rockers don't have any adjustment. They're hydraulic rockers. There's no adjustment to them, and they just simply come in and out. You don't have to take any screws or loosen any nuts or anything to take them out. So basically I'll just put this on, compress the spring, the rocker will just slide out, um, and then uh, I'll compress the spring, get the keeper wedges off, and uh, replace the seals. Alright, I did three of the cylinders, number four, three, and two, and I've got to do the last one, so I'll show you how to do that. But you can see um, the valve seals here are just like ABS plastic, and one of them just shattered. It's so brittle. You see that? And then the new ones are a neoprene or a polyurethane or whatever they're made out of, but they're nice and flexible. So that was the issue. Um, but to do this, um, after you get the cover off and everything, you got to take the end of the compression stroke so the rockers aren't on the lobes of the cam. So I just have a wrench on the front here ratchet and I'll rotate it around. That's how I'm at the top of the compression stroke right there. So that's good to go. Remove your wrench at the end, your ratchet, so you don't start the engine this thing takes off. So the next step is to take this handy dandy tool I got on Amazon. And the neat thing about this engine is you just compress the springs without any air pressure on and the rockers just come right out. So like so, loop it around there and push down. And this is really slick how this works. But the rocker just comes right out. So there's no adjustments. These are hydraulic lifters, but no adjustments to do at the end and you just set that aside easy okay the next thing to do is I need to put air on the cylinder so so I'll take my spark plug out thread out my air hose off a of number three cylinder or number two cylinder rather Put it in the hole, thread it back on. Have a good seal. And get my neighbor to turn the ear back on. Just twist that, Jerry. Hold on a second, let me connect up first. And there's the second one. Let off the pressure on it. Take my tool off. Take the spring out. And there, here's the valve seal. So I'm going to pry this out with a little crowbar, pry bar. And these are so baked on here. There it goes. You see how loose it is on the valve, it just slides right off the top. This is all worn out, and that's where the oil is going down into the uh, cylinder. I have my new valve seal. Put a little bit of oil down in there. There we go. And this is a 7 16 inch deep socket, so I'm going to seat the seal now. Make sure it's all the way down seated on the bottom. Put the spring back on and the, the hat. My fancy tool here. Now I need to get my wedges back in again. Sorry for all the noise, I got my air compressors running. Drop the wedge.
and then spin the wedge around to the back and then put the front one in. So both wedges are in, the keepers, and make sure they're seated really good. The next thing is I need to take the air off and I'll slide the rocker back in. So here's my rocker. Press everything down. Make sure the valve does go back down again. Slide the rocker back up in there. Release the pressure and you're done. So I just have one more to go and put the valve cover back on. We'll fire it up and see how it runs. The next project I need to do, um, I want to control the heat underneath the hood. This body is fiberglass and I don't want all the heat coming up from the headers. So I'm going to pull the header off and I'm going to heat wrap it. I'll show you how to put heat wrap on an exhaust pipe. So this is the exhaust heat wrap. I'll put the Amazon link in the description on the stuff that I like using. And that's about a two inch wide uh, tape. And then here's the straps that come with it um, to tie the end to hold the end uh, so it doesn't unravel. But what I like doing is starting at the top of the pipe and uh, cut a length of this, estimate what you need, and then you need to soak it in a bucket of water, get it wet, and then start wrapping. And what I like doing is start the wrap and then have it wrap back on itself. That way I don't have to waste a tie uh, at the top here, at the top of the header. Wrap it around itself one time and then start down there all the way down to the end and then use one of the stainless steel straps at the end of the pipe. Um, in this case, I have a four cylinder, so uh, I'll just have four pipes to do. And then once I get down to the end here, what I'll do is I'll take, again, wrap onto itself and then come down here and then complete the task. And uh, that really works. It really reduces the uh, temperature under the hood. And uh, I guess they say too that it helps uh, the pipes heat up a little more and scavenge the gas out. I don't know if that's quite true or not, but that's what I read. But I'm mostly interested in uh, the heat control underneath the hood. So I just dry wrapped it. I haven't wet it yet just to figure out what kind of length I need for each pipe. And uh, this is the length. I'll measure it and then I'll cut a couple pieces. But uh, so I start from the the outlet end and uh, just continue to wrap around while it's dry, figure out what length I need. all done and uh, turned out really good. One thing to note is once you measure your length of the wrap that you need for one pipe, if you have a good set of headers, all the pipes should be the same length. So you should be good to go there cutting the material. But uh, once this dries, it really hardens up and stays in place, um, even though you have uh, the straps on there uh, to help out a bit. But it uh, worked out really well. The next and last thing to do is take my wrap and I'm going to wrap it around the collector um, all the way down. All right, that was a nice little project. And as they say, it's all wrapped up. Ha <laughs> ha. But uh, yeah, this is going to be looking pretty good. The other thing you could do is once it dries really good, if you wanted to put some high heat black paint on it or high heat silver, whatever, dress it up a little bit, uh, you could do that. Uh, the cloth will absorb it. But I'm just going to leave it the way it is, get it back on the car, 
and call this done. Boy, the wrap turned out really nice, so that's going to control a lot of heat underneath the hood. All right, check this out. I did a lot of this work off camera, a lot of tedious stuff, but uh, I have the doors on and the handles and the hinges, and the hinges worked out really good. I had those in the parts box, came with the uh, body components. And then I showed in the last video the door latch uh, right over there that I got off of a tractor, like the tractor doors like John Deere and Case and all that, uh, to shut the cab doors and was able to chop off the inside handle and uh, put uh, a nice chrome finished handle on it. And it worked out really good. But the hinges, I used star nuts uh, on the inside here, if you could see that. Uh, drilled all the way through, and I think that's like an 832 screw bolt that went through there. Um, I used my Model A straps, door straps. Um, make sure I don't overextend it and bang into the fenders. And then I was able to make a door strike. So I used a piece of strap steel here. And then I have quarter 20 studs up here and down at the bottom going into the body. And then I was able to get a washer and a uh, lock nut on the back. But, uh, and then ground everything flush. But uh, that worked out pretty good. And uh, slams nice. I got a nice handle on the outside. And then again, I had to just kind of file down the shaft to go through and then cut it off uh, for the, uh, the rear handle. So the next project is, is I need to do a little bit more fiberglassing. And uh, this back seat liner um, kind of laps over the body here. And it was under too much tension. I had to spring it out. So, so I did a relief cut along here um, to allow it to come over this, this way a little bit, as you can see. And I need to scuff this up. This is a gel coat. Get it all scuffed up and then I'll fiberglass. Cut a piece of fiberglass mat that you've seen me do in a previous video. And I'll go over it and fiberglass it in like so. Um, and that'll finish that up. And then on the other side over here, I have a grab handle that I got on eBay. This is cast aluminum polished, really super nice. It's about 50 bucks on eBay. And it has the bolts going through it. And this is intended for a grab handle on a dash of like a split window VW bus from the late 50s, early 60s, and also on the door handle. But I had this space over here. I cut a piece of wood out uh, to clear the steering column and then I was able to piece it into the radio hole uh, to finish that up since, as you've seen in a previous video, I have a gauge radio now uh, to go into the dash. So next thing is I'm going to drill through here, through the wood, and then these studs are long enough to uh, go ahead and uh, put them in from the rear. And uh, that should look pretty good. So I'm going to get the fiberglassing done, get this grab handle on. Uh, also, I don't know if I mentioned a previous video, but on eBay I found this really cool little oval mirror. Um, and when I had the dash shot, I drilled a couple holes, mounted it so I have a nice rear view mirror. Typically on these, you'd have a rod coming down with a mirror clamped on the rod that goes up and down to adjust. I didn't want to do that. Um, so, get that done. And then I have the wind wing hardware. Um, I've built a couple Cobras in the past where I had wind wings, little polycarbonate, little piece of plexiglass it comes out about that far. So I did get the hardware in uh, that I bought on eBay, which is for an AC Cobra. And I'll get those mounted on here and then I'll make up a cardboard template, roughly what I want the wind wing to look like. And that'll prevent some buffeting and stuff when we're driving down the road at you know higher speeds. And then it'll deflect the wind around the passengers and the driver. But uh, yeah, looking really good. A lot of progress getting down into the final stages here. got the grab handle installed that turned out really super nice and it is strong on there um, that's done the 
the fiberglassing over here and here is done, sat overnight, reacted really well, good and hard. Today's project is to finish up this back seat uh, lining and you see there's a gap all the way around under the fiberglass, that's about an inch and a quarter. So uh, I ripped some two by fours down to inch and a quarter. I just need to measure them up and then make a frame around the outside perimeter and then a couple center supports, cut a piece of OSB, which is gonna be the rear seat from here to the back wall. That'll all get upholstered and covered. So uh, let's go ahead into time warp on the GoPro and uh, get this knocked out. seat liners back in and uh, looking really good with the spacer that I made uh, sitting right on the wood. Next thing I need to do is uh, drill a couple holes around the edge and uh, screw it down uh, once I have the trunk lid hinges on. So the next project is to put the hinges on and then slide this back and forth so my lip just ends up smooth on here. Also had a scrap piece of OSB um, that I cut that will just lay in here and that will be totally upholstered. So I have the rear trunk liner in and installed and anchored down. I had to do a little bit of grinding along the edge uh, to make a nice seam all the way around. I just cut an old scrap piece of uh, OSP, but I'm anchored around all the edges down to my wood rail that I installed. So that is done. And all this is going to get upholstered, so it's all going to be padded and upholstered, make it puffy looking. Um, I did get the trunk lid positioned on along with the two hinges on either side, and it is functioning now. So next thing is I'll get some bigger weather strip in here, paint this black up underneath. And, uh, and then after that, I need to put the two latches on either side. Today's project is going to be making a cover out of sheet metal. Uh, to cover up my brake assembly here so my entire engine compartment will be done uh, so I'm gonna do uh, some CAD design uh, to make a cover cardboard aided design I'll probably go into time warp to show you how I do that and then I need to make a air deflector up in here and then bend a piece of metal to come down in here uh, so the air doesn't just blow over top of the radiator and actually go in <music>
lot of progress. My brake cover box is all done. I showed you how to fabricate that. That was pretty easy to do. And then I have my air shield or radiator shroud, whatever you want to call it, uh, across the front to block the air from flowing across the motor and it'll redirect it into the radiator. So working on the inside of the fan shroud, I made this, I showed this a little bit earlier, and uh, that's good to go there to deflect the air down through the radiator. And then I had these openings on either side, um, if you could see this on this side and this side. So, so again, some CAD design, cardboard aided design, and I made uh, cardboard cutouts. So, so now I'll just transfer this into steel on both sides, pull this one out, and then I'll screw them in place, paint them, and that's going to finish that up. So good to go. So the side fan shrouds all fabricated and installed it turned out really nice. I'll just put a little bit of foam around uh, a couple of little gaps. I have the heat controlled on my headers with the heat wrap. So now I need to put in my coolant recovery kit, which is basically an expansion uh, container for the radiator fluid. Uh, so when the fluid expands, it'll come out this port and then come to a hose on the bottom of the container. And then uh, you leave a little bit in there, maybe a couple pints or whatever. And then if it ever expands and overflows, it'll shoot it out the side. But um, if you have an old car, it's a good thing to do. I'll put the Amazon link in the description. It's only like 15 bucks. But I have this spot uh, right down in here which I think is going to be perfect for it. Turn this around. And I'm going to mount it like right up in here. Um, so I'm going to make a little Z bracket out of some sheet metal, weld it onto the mounting tabs, and then I'll just drill through the fiberglass here uh, with a couple bolts. And it doesn't weigh much, doesn't take much to hold it all. So uh, I'll get that done here in a bit. The radiator expansion tank is done. The brackets work great in the spacers off the side. And uh, plenty of room between the headers. It's been wrapped for heat. So let's go ahead and wrap up the video. Please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, hopefully you found this educational and entertaining a bit. And uh, I'll catch you on the next video.